And if everybody agrees, we are going to jump into the next presentation. As you have noticed, we have uh, shifted slightly the program for today. And now it's the term for uh, the, the topic on digitalization of European SMEs, which will be presented by Liam Jia. Uh, in the past years, and even during the pandemic, uh, European SMEs in the digital sector posted a stronger value added and employment performances. The COVID outbreak has also been a boost in how SMEs perceive the introduction of digital solutions to their businesses. In this session, Liam is going to look into a number of topics around digitalization and of SMEs and the market opportunities arising in China. As mentioned before, Liam is our operation manager at the USME Center. He has over six years of experience advising European businesses on market access and business strategies to China. Uh, he has solid uh, working experience also in European projects as he's our uh, project manager and he's a frequent the speaker and author of publications on a wide range of topics. Liam, the floor is yours. Thank you, Laura. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Perfect, perfect. Um, and thanks as well for uh, your very kind introduction. Um, and indeed, uh, today I will be sharing um, the topic on digitalization of uh, European SMEs and as well um, how the markets look like uh, in China. Digitalization uh, has been one topic that has been constantly um, repeated uh, during different occasions. Uh, and of course, uh, through my sharing today, I will try as much as possible to give everyone a overall picture. But of course, my focus will also be on how uh, eventually European SMEs um, can identify their potentials and eventually consider about entering a market uh, in China. Uh, if you allow me, I will also share my screen <coughs> of the presentation that I prepared. <coughs> can you see me or I have to, uh, yeah, do it the other way around? I think you have to do the other way around. And now? Here we are. Perfect. Okay. Okay, though. Uh, so, uh, as I've been introducing um, on the background, um, so in a, in a very short time, in a relatively short span of time, China has um, transitioned from a technological backwater to uh, one of uh, the world's largest digital economies. Um, some fat figures on the back of its base of nearly 1 million internet users, China's e-commerce sales in 2020 has grown to 1.7 trillion US dollars. Um, it's a number that is equivalent to 30% of all retail sales in China. But it's not just a story of size, right? Uh, it is above all a story of uh, innovation, disruption in omnichannel retail, in social media, um, in on-demand services, uh, mobility of, uh, of the country, and as well as many different sectors, you name it, fintech, health tech, education technologies. Um, China is developing uh, many, uh, as we call it, uh, China first innovation. So in my presentation for today, uh, we'll take a close look at these uh, innovations to start with, and then also uh, the forces driving these uh, technologies. Um, as well as, uh, as the trends uh, to watch and eventually uh, the technologies that uh, enable these, uh, these trends. Uh, but also in the end, like I've been introducing uh, introduction uh, on how uh, eventually SMEs can identify their potentials and tap into this uh, uh, very fast changing, but uh, a very potential digital uh, economy in China. Um, so a quick snapshot on, uh, on the agenda of uh, my presentation today. Uh, so first, we set the context by uh, highlighting the, facts, the factors that have created uh, the conditions necessary to uh, give rise to China's digital ecosystem, so the foundations. Uh, next, uh, we'll be taking a quick look at the current state of play in China's uh, digital economy. Uh, also breaking down its components and offering insight into a major forces um, and technology enablers uh, that have brought us to where we are today. 
uh, then uh, we'll uh, be exploring the, the trends uh, that, is, that is driving uh, this innovation uh, in China. So there we're talking about retail integration, the virtualization of services, uh, the revolution of uh, mobility, the digitalization of social life, um, social commerce, uh, industrial uh, internet of things. So uh, the digitalization in terms of manufacturing, uh, supply chain digitalization, as well as uh, digitalization in urbanization. Um, and eventually um, I prepared a little checklist for every one of you, uh, even if you are a business intermediary or if you are SME yourself, um, a checklist of questions for you to answer um, that uh, you can refer to when start thinking about um, uh, reshuffling uh, your strategies and eventually to look into entering a market like China. So of course, uh, all these insights um, may be relevant to SMEs uh, who are already having a presence on the ground in China, um, but also for those um, who are not yet in China but considering entering the market. Uh, many of these points that I'm going to mention in my presentation today will be reflected uh, in many ways on your uh, businesses in a way or two. Um, but then the question eventually will be that is digitalization, is digital innovation in China relevant um, to you uh, being in Europe, uh, to the rest of the world? And for uh, European SMEs who do not have a presence in China, but considering it's the market, um, you might as well consider using the China experience as a reference point. So, because digital, uh, China's digital ecosystem uh, players are, uh, as we see it, uh, driving innovations at at the share speed and, and scale as well. And they are redefining what it means to manage uh, businesses today, as uh, as you see it. Uh, so, the foundations. Um, I have put down here on this slide um, four interconnected uh, factors that have created the, the conditions necessary to rise, uh, to give rise to China's digital eco ecosystem. First of all, a, a vast digital consumer base, uh, an intense the pressure um, for the ecosystem to quickly reach scale, a digital ecosystem that uh, fosters innovation and eventually the second role. Um, of the government. In China's uh, skill <clears throat> advantage, um, uh, I don't need to mention too much about that. This has uh, spanned in many different domains, many different sectors. And one of them is being that there is a big pool of uh, internet users uh, of uh, close to one billion. Uh, in China, which is, um, if you look at the stats, larger than US and EU combined. And of these 1 billion internet users, more than 200 million are digital users, uh, meaning users, internet users on their digital devices who have grown up uh, with computers, with uh, smart devices like smartphones, uh, iPads, um, and internet, and are entirely comfortable trying out and trusting new technologies and apps. And naturally, the depth of um, China's user base has, has also supported its emergence as the world's largest uh, e-commerce uh, market, uh, reaching, uh, has been introduced in 2020, last year, 1.7 trillion US dollars in, uh, in terms of online transaction uh, value. Um, and beyond um, just the skill, China's uh, emergence as, as well as advanced, advanced digital economy is also driven by digital uh, ecosystem, both by market moving internet players. Uh, there we're talking about the, the starting with the, the early moving giants, uh, such as uh, Baidu, such as Alibaba, Tencent, uh, the so-called BAT bet, um, that represented the, the first wave of digital champions. Um, and those were born in the internet era of, of text, of photos, uh, rooted in their core disciplines of, of searching engines, of e-commerce uh, and social media, respectively. And then at that point, uh, China's digital landscape was, uh, compar was comparing, what was being compared was uh, paralleled with that in the, in the West, uh, where uh, Google, Amazon and Facebook uh, were mapping the functions fulfilled by uh, resp uh, respectively, those those three Chinese giants. However, 
Um, such similarity or such comparison uh, did not last long, didn't have long life, as China's uh, Tencent has created a new model in which uh, Chinese players launch so-called uh, super apps um, with, uh, you know that I'm going to mention about WeChat, for example, uh, with all the advanced digital payment services at the core. Uh, however, these apps also have massive uh, user base and high uh, high frequency of engagement, enabling their developers to also divert huge traffic into a portfolio of offerings uh, hosted in-house or by partners. So then I'm going to talk about WeChat, uh, which now uh, has around more than 1 billion users uh, globally. And it's the best example of a, uh, of a super app, of an all-encompassing app uh, that's uh, revolving around the social messaging and payment services. Uh, Tencent's background, uh, as everybody probably already know about, um, was uh, social, uh, was, was also even gaming uh, in the 90s in China. And Alibaba was actually initially focusing uh, on e-commerce via uh, Taobao uh, as an as, uh, as, uh, e-marketplace. Um, but the launch of Alipay uh, back in a few years, uh, Alibaba's, which is Alibaba's super app, it's mobile payment services, uh, also facilitated the growth of a similar, uh, of a similarly sprouting uh, ecosystem of payments, uh, merchants, uh, content creation, as well as other on-demand services. So, and now a second and a third wave of uh, of champions has 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 arise. Um, and real time, they were talking about real time uh, location based instead services, artificial intelligence uh, enabler, uh, enabling algorithms. Ride-hailing apps like like Didi, uh, on-demand lifestyle platforms uh, such as Douyin, uh, the Chinese version of TikTok, uh, and social e-commerce platforms like uh, like Pinduoduo, uh, video hosting platforms uh, like uh, like Quaiso, uh, and, and new ecosystems uh, and all these uh, uh, emerging super apps continue to emerge in step with shifts in consumer behavior. So, the example of Douyin, for example, has captured. Um, I'm not sure if I need to share the next slide already. No. Um, so uh, coming back to the example of Douyin, uh, which is Chinese version of TikTok, has captured lines of shares of consumer attention, um, and they started actually as a short video um, live streaming platform, and eventually expanded to a huge e-commerce and location-based lifestyle service uh, provider. Um, one of the super apps. This means that the um, this gives an indication that the uh, abundant capital will continue to flow in uh, in this ecosystem and uh, allow the, the, uh, the players in this ecosystem to constantly create new business models uh, into establishing audiences at into, into well-established uh, audiences at a very low um, cost in terms of uh, user acquisition. And which means that we have not seen uh, yet the last reshuffling uh, of China's digital uh, ecosystem. Uh, we are not there yet. Um, as much as market forces can claim responsibility for a success of uh, China's digital economy, uh, the government has also been playing an uh, essential role uh, in shipping up in how this ecosystem has been shipping up. So China's central bank, uh, first of all, allowed third-party payments providers to operate free from regulations uh, for several years uh, after they first uh, eventually emerged and only later tighten up uh, licensing requirements rather than implementing more uh, stringent financial control. So that being said, the government will um, occasionally, so sometimes step into protecting consumers as well, uh, disrupting uh, perceived monopoly practices and um, otherwise managed risk. So more recently, uh, some examples, uh, Given here is the market regulators uh, from Chinese authority side has uh, tightened uh, oversight of e-commerce platforms uh, after there were uh, several reports of uh, monopolistic behaviors of, uh, of some big players and problems related to uh, the sales of uh, fake goods online. Um, and uh, probably everybody now is familiar that uh, the IP environment, IP protection environment in China has been improved as also being reflected uh, speakers from yesterday um, uh, from IP Help Desk. So, um, moving on to the current state of play, um, introducing uh, the forces 
um, that is shaping up uh, digitalization in China. I have put down here uh, also five blocks, um, which I believe are the key forces, uh, starting with uh, e-commerce and omni channels. Um, e-commerce is a dominant force in China, as I already been mentioned a couple of times, especially in the retail market, with around 30% of the annual retail value is being spent online. <coughs> Uh, however, e-commerce um, normally has been understood uh, globally by consumers and also by academics, um, but there is um, less consensus over the definition of omni-channels. And uh, one way of looking at it is having a multi-channel approach uh, to, co to customer fulfillment. So making sure that products uh, or services can reach consumers by uh, all different channels by a, by a variety of all different channels and purchasing decisions uh, in China also very largely uh, been based on omni channels. Examples is that uh, for Chinese consumers, um, they are famous for being picky uh, from the cultural, from the consuming cultural uh, perspective, uh, consuming culture perspective, uh, Chinese consumers also tend to compare um, before purchasing one single product uh, on different, through different channels. So um, examples of that is uh, uh, many Chinese consumers, uh, especially um, female consumers tend to um, take a look first of certain products online through different uh, e-commerce channels, um, especially when it comes to uh, high-end products or uh, products that are more costly. Um, and eventually uh, complete the purchase offline in real stores where uh, more customer services uh, are offered. Um, that's about uh, omni-channels. Um, and in terms of uh, social commerce, uh, which is on the left side of, uh, of the slide, um, Chinese consumers also have a remarkably uh, strong affinity for social commerce or e-commerce in which social media is uh, uh, being the primary driver of sales. And the average consumer in China now spends more than um, seven hours a day on mobile internet. Uh, that figure being given, um, it's a figure that increased by 20%, um, also uh, last year in the aftermath of uh, COVID-19. Uh, so uh, consumers are spending even more time on uh, their mobile devices. And about two thirds of those seven hours is spent using social or uh, content uh, uh, creation social apps. And as users also seek out information from social media, uh, influencers, as we call it, uh, KOLs, key opinion leaders, uh, and also friends in order to make decisions about purchases. Uh, remarkably, time spent using social or um, content apps is now driving half of uh, the interest of shopping of consumers, uh, one quarter, 25% of, of eventually of the purchase actions. Um, in China's overall social commerce market is expected to be uh, um, to more than double in size uh, from 2019 levels to reach gross sales of uh, almost 450 uh, billion US dollars in 2021, uh, as being predicted. Um, yeah, sorry, I forgot to share the, the slides. Um, Okay, um, coming back to, uh, to this slide on, uh, on uh, uh, the forces um, shaping the digital ecosystem in China, um, shared mobility. So from, uh, from taxis to uh, premium uh, sedans, light tracks to buses, from bicycles to um, motorbikes and nearly all forms of trans transportation tools are now um, being made accessible on shared mobility platforms in China. And being in China, you will know uh, about this even better uh, than me. I need to mention that in China, shared mobility has a very strong central and also local government backing and support. Um, this is also partly to relieve um, the very famous uh, uh, tra traffic congestion problems, uh, the sort of pressure on public transport, um, and as a means of uh, stimulating sales of uh, electric vehicles eventually, which make up a significant share of uh, China's uh, ride-hailing fleet. 
Um, last, not the least, com comes to distribution, to satisfy familiarity with um, and desire for direct services, extends to business to business digital platforms, which are increasingly integrating with consumer facing platforms to improve supply chain efficiency. So, this has also spurred on uh, by cash flow challenges in the midst of pandemic, companies in a host of industries. Uh, accelerated the digitalization of distribution in order to improve uh, efficiency of their uh, of their businesses. And having uh, introduced um, all the forces uh, shaping the digital ecosystem in China, having um, introduced um, the foundations. Uh, so current state of play and how we uh, come to a stage of where we are. Um, next, I'm going to introduce uh, to you the trends to watch uh, for uh, the digital ecosystem in China. Uh, what are upcoming? Um, almost half of, uh, so to start with uh, digital uh, urbanization, almost half of uh, the world's uh, smart cities are uh, in China and actually around 500 in total. Uh, so imagine that uh, all the digital innovations that we have been talking about earlier in education, in healthcare, in logistics, in transportation, um, and all this uh, omnichannel e-commerce, for example, all of these technologies are being uh, applied and implemented uh, at a massive scale across all these smart cities in China uh, to improve public service provision. Um, how, how would that be? And to give you an example, in Shenzhen now, uh, the company Tencent is building a smart city that puts people uh, and the environment first. The aim of that is to cut down, um, first of all, on car usage uh, by using artificial intelligence to improve public access, uh, but at the same time, uh, integrating green space into huge campus for employees. So, um, it is actually happening, and digitalization and urbanization is definitely one of the many trends to uh, to watch, to watch out for, to, to watch for in China. Um, manufacturing uh, digitalization and supply chain development. So manufacturing companies um, will also start to increasingly embrace um, uh, what we call it IIoT, so industrial internet of things, um, which uh, enables all these uh, manufacturing companies to improve their efficiency and eventually also sustainability. An example of this is uh, Saic, uh, a leading automatic, uh, auto, auto, automaker in Shanghai, uh, in China, has, has shown uh, how communities of manufacturing can enable entire, entirely new and custom, uh, customer to business models, see to be where digital solutions enable buyers to customize their orders via 3D, three-dimensional digital car uh, simulations. And uh, car configuration, production queue information is then uh, transmitted to suppliers to um, initiate um, just in-sequence shipment and reducing time to market by 35%. Uh, one example of uh, again, how um, committing to digital uh, digitalization, digital manufacturing can uh, actually enable um, better uh, customer, uh, customer experience, but also eventually increase uh, efficiency. And um, okay. Um, my connection is not very stable. I was told so. Uh, so if you lost my, if you lost me, please let me know. Uh, digitalization of social life. So uh, Chinese consumers are uh, nowadays also moving more and more um, of their social um, activities, interactions, their leisure activities into virtual domains. Uh, here I call it life becomes old. Oh, so uh, online to offline, offline to online. You can understand it both ways. Virtual and physical social activities are um, now uh, merging. So life itself is becoming all to all, where offline meets um, meets up with with meets up offline meets up more frequently. Or online game streaming uh, sites, for example, uh, as uh, like Douyu. 
um, people actually brought together by the love of uh, one particular title, uh, genre, or live stream host, um, actually are taking chat rooms directions into the real world. So they're even organizing um, offline activities uh, together in terms of yoga classes or running clubs. So, and China's highly developed uh, share eventually of uh, mobility network also uh, will become uh, a big trend to watch. Uh, so the, I call it the revolution of uh, digitalization of mobilities. Um, being in China, everybody's familiar with uh, all the uh, mobility sharing platforms uh, with all this, starting with all these uh, sharing bikes, um, which, uh, has, uh, which has been seen uh, back in a few years. Um, China's highly developed shared mobility network um, has also increasingly uh, been empowered by the availability of electric vehicles. Um, or connected smart vehicles. So with full autonomous driving fleets uh, on the horizon, uh, there are already some pilots uh, projects from companies, uh, for example, like uh, Didi implementing uh, self-driving uh, taxis. So the application eventually of artificial intelligence could also reduce uh, or are expected uh, to be reducing traffic congestions uh, to relieve pressures from uh, public transportations. Um, and also then in terms of uh, the logistics sector and these developments uh, eventually will also uh, solve many high cost to service issues. For example, now uh, in the city of Beijing, uh, the government has also given the green light for uh, JD.com, for Jingdong, together with Mate One, uh, to partner up with uh, autonomous delivery vehicle startup companies. Uh, to uh, develop pilot driverless grocery deliveries uh, and building on advanced, uh, building on these advances that made during uh, also the pandemic area for uh, where the government was, when the government was pushing for contactless services. Um, so um, these are um, what I have uh, outlined as, as, as the mega trends uh, to watch for uh, digitalization in China. And uh, as I've been introducing the agenda, um, the latter part of my presentation, I'll be focusing on um, eventually how uh, SMEs, EU uh, SMEs, or um, being a um, digitalization technology owner yourself um, can identify potentials and tap into the, into the market here in China. Um, if we look at how SMEs um, can uh, digitalize their business activities, it is mainly on, on these uh, several aspects, starting with the improvement of operational ICT skills, uh, the use of social media, tapping into social commerce, uh, improving uh, the ICT security systems, um, and eventually also moving on to the introduction of online marketing and sales and to adopt more advanced uh, technologies, which normally uh, involves um, investments uh, funds. But the benefits is clear, um, especially on uh, increasing sustainability of the businesses, but also on reducing impact on the environment. Um, from the uh, SME digitalization reports published by the commission from last year, 37% uh, of EU SMEs have already implemented an environmental sustainability plan. So um, from um, the overall picture, um, things are looking positive uh, in the EU side. Uh, however, there are also challenges uh, facing SMEs uh, when completing their uh, digitalization behaviors. The level, to start with, the level of digitalization of uh, USMEs varies also across from the SME class, uh, meaning that, um, of course, uh, if you are a large uh, enterprise, if you're a multinational, um, supposedly you have uh, better resources, uh, especially financially, well, much more, uh, much better equipped than a medium-sized um, SME and eventually also than uh, a micro SME of, um, or uh, entrepreneur, uh, him or herself. Um, one other challenge is that, especially for micro SMEs, um, 
is still in not uh, in, 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 in significant pro proportion of uh, SMEs uh, or micro SMEs, especially is of the opinion that uh, digitalization is not <coughs> uh, useful or necessary or um, that the economic incentives, um, the benefits um, uh, still outweighs uh, the cost, still outweighs uh, the benefits that they could foresee for uh, the cost for digitalization uh, investments. And there is also a unbalanced development between different regions within uh, a country and also uh, between the different member states. Um, and lastly, uh, very importantly, there's also no one size fits for all program or policy uh, that is likely to, to be implemented or likely to work. Um, meaning that um, for micro SMEs, for entrepreneurs uh, who has limited resources, but also at the same time, limited experiences uh, of digitalization, um, most of the times they're looking for, first of all, financial support. Um, and uh, next is to uh, how to identify the potentials in their own businesses in terms of digitalization. Where are the uh, aspects uh, for, uh, where, where is the space for improvement? Uh, and eventually uh, what they require will be a mentoring uh, for the process and eventually networking with uh, the peers and also uh, with other players in the supply chain. And SMEs um, uh, who has, uh, or medium-sized companies who has, uh, comparing to micros, uh, more, uh, much more or much more incentive, uh, extensive digital experiences, experiences um, will um, be benefiting more from training uh, of personnel, of training of uh, management, uh, and eventually um, on accessing the advanced um, skills uh, that uh, they uh, will require to uh, be to equip themselves for um, a better level of digitalization. So, and these are the challenges um, in uh, very briefly, um, about uh, digitalization of SMEs in Europe. However, uh, there are also um, challenges that companies are facing in China. In China, there's already um, a few players on the ground, on the market, uh, a few solution uh, holders, uh, SMEs who are providing uh, digitalized solutions um, to the market. However, the challenges facing China is that, first of all, uh, the, regu uh, the regulators in China has already been introduced um, there are um, uh, government regulations um, on digitalization, and also companies are facing challenges, including data protection, data security, um, and also uh, one uh, big challenge that companies are facing here is that uh, there are two types of uh, companies that are interested in China um, when it comes to uh, providing solutions. One of them being um, I'm an SME, I'm a technology owner. I want to implement my solutions to a market in China. Um, is there a market for me? And the other one being um, that um, I have, uh, I'm a solution owner, I have technologies, uh, I'm interested in the market. I want to understand what are the market, what is the market demanding? And I'm willing to um, adapt my technologies uh, based on demands of, of the market. Um, and it's very easy to uh, tell that um, the market or the market, is, uh, the market demand uh, will uh, mo more likely be answered by a lot of one. Um, and talk about market, market demands, there is also a mismatch uh, in terms of uh, what a market uh, is requiring from technology owners uh, and what the, te what the technology owners is offering. That market here in China, very largely based on um, are still preferring um, cheap and bulk solutions, uh, which resulted uh, in the fact that uh, there is normally a lack of uh, adequate financing models, a lack of economic framework that is promoting long-term sustainability. So um, many uh, very highly digitalized uh, EU SMEs uh, would also find it challenging to land their solutions. Um, and one last point I'm making here is that um, the investment of today uh, risks to be risks to be based on solutions and challenges of yesterday. So 
um, especially when it comes to procurement uh, of, uh, of uh, projects, uh, of uh, procurements that are requiring uh, digitalized solutions. Um, normally, the demand for digitalization uh, solutions are not very well specified. Uh, uh, and it's also very largely based on uh, solving the pro problems that are already there. Uh, while at the same time, digitalization um, um, represents the future, represents uh, solutions uh, address to be addressed to, um, to, uh, to the picture of tomorrow. And uh, meaning that uh, the challenge is that the capacity and competence of uh, procurers in China uh, sometimes um, can also be uh, a big challenge. And in the end, as I mentioned, I prepared this little checklist um, for every one of you, especially if you're a USME, to consider if uh, you are ready to tap into the digital ecosystem in China. Uh, is your business digital ready? So uh, how to identify uh, the potentials of, first of all, your business and uh, the, potentials of, uh, the potentials of entering a market like China, um, how to get started, um, to check what are the funds subsidies available, what are the grants available, which platforms uh, to tap into, um, how to find, where to find uh, the mentoring required, uh, networking with peers um, and players from the supply chain, et cetera. Uh, is your service uh, ubiquitous enough? Is your service because uh, this, uh, this, this, uh, this, this, uh, this digitalized technologies are uh, many of them already largely available in China? And China being such a big market, it is important also to have your services ubiquitous. Um, and what can you add eventually to the uh, picture? Uh, how to manage the risk of governance? Uh, how do you uh, eventually, uh, being SME, reorganize uh, your business strategies and reorganize your uh, structure. So, um, after all, the development of uh, new technologies, uh, the enabling of digitalization has always been um, serving also eventually to break down the silos or connecting the silos between the different technology holders uh, and also between the different powers. Um, digital innovations that emerge in China um, all these trends that I've uh, been introducing uh, for you to watch will not only shape its own ecosystem, but also serve as a reference point for um, digital ecosystem that are evolving uh, in Europe or elsewhere. So understanding the path um, that these innovation, uh, innovations uh, take is uh, will consequently um, uh, be more important than ever. Um, digitalization, uh, as everybody has uh, been saying that, is one for uh, the future. We can predict, we can make our projections. Uh, however, for especially if you're a European SME, uh, it is something that matters to your business. Um, and that is the end of my uh, presentation, my introduction to you on digitalization, the digital ecosystem in China. Um, happy to take on uh, further questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liam. Uh, I would like to start with actually a question that was uh, mentioned by one of the participants yesterday. It was a little bit out of the scope, but I think it fills perfectly within today's topic. So if you allowed me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with that one. Uh, the person uh, wanted to know uh, about the importance of creating uh, WeChat profiles, WeChat SOPs as a way to access the market. Everybody talks about WeChat. Everybody talks uh, on the role that it has, uh, not only businesses, but also in, in the day-to-day -day life of the individuals, but what is your stand and what is the real uh, role of WeChat in, in businesses and in, uh, in the path of digitalization in China for businesses? Um, yeah, well, um, as I've been uh, introducing in my presentation, uh, WeChat started or Tension started as, as, as a gaming and social app, so WeChat uh, started uh, started off as uh, being introduced as an app of instant messaging of uh, connecting of chatting with friends. Uh, however, it has also 
been eventually shaping up uh, the social commerce uh, picture. And nowadays, um, we said it's a super app that also are integrating many different functions in there. And of course, including uh, trade, including businesses. Um, one of the biggest advantages of um, having a WeChat shop is that comparing, of course, comparing to other source, uh, to other uh, means, to other channels of, of uh, e-commerce sales is that you get a better access to your consumer base. Uh, because of the fact that everybody is on WeChat, um, people spend, uh, people in China, the consumer spend um, so much time on their social apps and China, WeChat being uh, one of the apps that they spend mo most of the time on. Um, there is indeed a convenience of uh, getting in touch directly with your consumer, with your target consumers, um, uh, having a direct access um, to their daily lives. Um, and that, of course, uh, from a consumer point of view, is having a much uh, bigger influence on their uh, purchasing uh, behaviors comparing to um, having uh, other sales uh, other, 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 other formats of sales being placed in your uh, products on e -commerce, other e-commerce platforms. So um, I would suggest um, that is definitely uh, one of the uh, most interesting um, platforms uh, that a company can uh, look into. Thanks for that, Liam. Now I'm connecting with the questions uh, that have been asked along the presentation. Uh, the first one, uh, it's about uh, potential opportunities for SMEs. China has created digital identity for both individuals and legal persons, as you know. Uh, could this potentially create opportunities for foreign businesses? For instance, corporations between uh, European and Chinese uh, companies operating in the ICT sector? Um, there, of course, we start with um, looking at uh, the regulatory framework. Um, if the condition, if the framework conditions uh, allow such corporations, um, that uh, of course is potential. And uh, I also mentioned in my presentation that one of the benefits of uh, digitalization uh, is to break down, is to connect the the, cell, the the silos, is to connect different technology holders. And also, um, if you look at the implementation of many of the digitalized uh, technologies, it's normally cross-sector as well. So if you are a um, technology owner of your own sector, it's very much possible uh, in the interconnected uh, world uh, that your uh, technologies uh, will also apply to a completely uh, irrelevant uh, sector as uh, digitalization further uh, develops. So um, a quick answer to that question is that definitely, that's definitely possible. And uh, there's um, a lot of uh, possibilities um, that both sides, both sides can look into. Indeed. And uh, connecting to this, uh, somebody wants to know if there is really a need to actually work with local partners in this specific sector, or is it possible for European SMEs to play solo, so to say? Um, I, I, I didn't... Uh, providing that we, we are, a European SME wants to, uh, let's say, operate in the digital uh, services field in China, to what extent these companies can enter the market as a woofy or, or operate themselves, or uh, to what extent they, it is required to or recommended to work with a Chinese partner in this field? Um, working with Chinese partner uh, will enable um, what gives you advantages of uh, connecting to the local demands. Um, that's, uh, that's a very clear advantage, of course, um, especially when it comes to the core of the technologies, um, companies may be more cautious of um, uh, if they cannot manage to find a trusted partner, I can understand the companies might uh, prefer to go solo. However, like I was uh, mentioning also in my presentation, um, it is, uh, very important to understand what the market uh, is demanding, especially when it comes to digitalized solutions. There are already uh, a lot of technologies um, largely available on the market and are uh, being implemented in the correct ways. Um, however, to be able to uh, convince um, the solution owners in China to be able to address uh, in, the, in, in the correct manner um, your solutions. 
um, it is uh, essential to understand the markets. And therefore, um, there comes uh, in um, the importance of, uh, of having a partner. Um, and again, um, this is my, my, my understanding. Uh, in practice, in practical, uh, in, in practice, um, and this is also uh, from the experiences when dealing with uh, uh, European SMEs who are already uh, on the market. So um, I will say, uh, I will not give a, a, a yes or no answer to that, but I think it's uh, important. What I want to highlight here is to understand demand. Great, and perhaps we can uh, briefly answer the last question from one of the participants. Somebody has read that WeChat registration process for companies' official account has been currently paused, and they want to know if this is true or it's just a rumor. Uh, there are. Uh, this is not the first time, and there are uh, in the past also uh, times when uh, the registration process or. Uh, not even just for an official account, but also for uh, widget shops uh, being suspended temporarily. Um, I, I suggest that uh, this uh, lady, uh, she could get in touch with us uh, after this presentation, and we could even have a further call on that. Um, we could answer the questions uh, after the presentation. Great, thank you very much, Liam. Unfortunately, the time is up, but for any question you might have related to this topic, please feel free to reach out to Liam. You have his contact details uh, on the slide that it's uh, on the screen right now. And uh, again, it will be circulated, so you will be able to contact him for further advice.